There are more than three billion people with a camera in their pocket. And that's changing the world of imaging and visual computing. I and my team at MIT Media Lab are using imaging for futuristic technologies as well as social innovation by building instruments for health diagnostics, by creating cameras that can visualize the world at a trillion frames per second, and with that systems that can see around corners, and also building the next generation of displays that can show 3D without glasses. Now, every one of us is pushing the envelope and inventing in art and technology and design and policy and business, but the process of invention can often seem very confusing. What I have learned is that I need a mental framework. If I hear a great idea X, what is next? So let me share with you a framework that I have used in classes and events and seminars worldwide, and I call it an idea hexagon. And it's all common sense. You can apply a formula to this original idea X and come up with dozens of new ideas. So let's get started. If I told you there's a great idea of sharing photos on the internet, what would be your next idea? Sharing videos. And Flickr was sold for just a few million dollars, but YouTube was sold for $1.6 billion. And all we did was we raised our problem to the next level. So by simply generalizing an idea to the next dimension, you can come up with what's next. So if I told you an airbag in cars can save lives, what would be your next idea? You can put airbags for airplanes or airbags for bicycles. The next strategy is to combine that idea X with something else that you may already know, X plus Y. But the more dissimilar the two ideas, more spectacular the fusion. So a few years ago, I went to get um, a CT scan, a CAT scan, and I heard some rattling noises, kind of scary place to be in there. And if you go online and search for videos of what it looks like when you remove the panel from a, a, a CT scan, you will see videos that look like this. And now imagine your head is inside this scary jet engine. That's how the innovation is taking place in some of these ideas. And when they want to create the next generation of a CT scan, they just make this machine spin even faster. So what we are doing in our group is combining the original idea of, of, of CT scan with new ideas that are absorbed from the world of astronomy uh, and telescoping. It turns out the technology that's used to look at faint stars can also be used to reduce the dosage uh, in X-rays. And in the future, we might be able to create portable CT machines that have no mechanically moving parts and no synchronization so that it's as easy as the West band or a headband. Hopefully, you're getting a hang of this, how, how we're applying simple formulas to the original idea X. Given a hammer, you just have to find all the nails. Don't just solve the original problem that was solving a specific solution, but try to find all the other solutions as well. When I was growing up in a family with modest income in India, you know, we have no TVs, no fridge, you know, no, definitely no eating out. But when I was about 12, uh, my father did give me uh, a roll of film, a camera and single roll of film you know, which has 24 photos. And developing was expensive, so you know how long it took me to use up that one roll of film? A week, a month, it took me a whole year to use up that roll. Most of the time, I used to just practice composing the shots. 
Well, from there, I have come a very long way. And now we can have cameras that can visualize the world at one trillion frames per second. It's a new form of photography, femtophotography, fast enough to see light in motion. If you send a packet of light into this bottle, can we see light in slow motion? As this light is shot into the bottle, it starts propagating through the milky waters. See some of the energy leaking through and propagating along the table. Most of the light reaches the cap and explodes, and you will see near the top of the bottle trapped air where light bounces around. Meanwhile, the light is propagating on the table, and because of the curvature of the bottle, it's focused all the way back of the bottle with some reflections. Now, the whole event takes place in one trillionth of a second. One, and to see this movie in about 10 second duration, I had to slow this down by a factor of 10 billion. Now, if you watch an ordinary bullet traveling over the same distance and also slow it down by a factor of 10 billion, do you know how long it will take you to watch that movie? A week? A month? A whole year? And this new form of ultra-fast imaging is the new hammer, and we're going to find all kinds of nails to hit with them. We can use it to create a new form of computational photography, where we can create time-lapse with color coding. Or we can use this to build cameras that can see around corners. The idea is to bounce light off of the visible surfaces, like a door, use scattered light that reflects back onto the door and back to the camera. And by analyzing these multiple bounces of light, it turns out we can create full 3D shapes of what's around the corner. And this is not just science fiction. We have built this in our lab using ultra-fast imaging equipment on a tabletop setup. Now, it's going to take us some time to take this outside the lab, but in the future, we might be able to create cars that can avoid collision of what's around the band, or we might be able to look for survivors in hazardous conditions by sending beams of light through open windows and doors, and create endoscopes that can see deep inside the body well beyond the reach of today's cameras. So the strategy number was three was to give a hammer, find all the nails. So here is a question. If we have an app store that improves the quality of a phone and provides new solutions, what about an app store for every electronic gadget that's out there? Your microwave, your refrigerator, your car. That's possible too. Strategy number four is, given a nail, find all the hammers. Given a new problem to solve, don't just use the original solutions that were used for it, but try to find all other solutions as well. And this idea hexagon is not just for inventing new technology, but you can use it in various fields, maybe even to figure out what you're going to do on your next vacation. Maybe you're going to take it to the next dimension, or combine that with some other ideas that you have, or try to find, solve the problem in new ways, or do exactly opposite of what you did last year. So strategy number five is to take your original idea and add your favorite adjective. And the most common adjectives you would use are faster, better, cheaper, but there are some other ones that you can use. You can make it more adaptive, distributed, efficient, and some newer ones, such as Wikipedia is encyclopedia democratized, or Pandora is radio personalized. And the last strategy is to take your idea X and do exactly opposite of what everybody else is doing. Be a teenager, be a rebel, do exactly the opposite. In till 60s, 
High jumpers would have to land in a sand pit on their arms and feet to avoid injuries. But Fosbury realized that in the 60s, the sand pit was switched to foam rubber, and he could run up to a high jump and twist his body and land on his back. In the ecosystem of an athlete, one tiny thing had changed, and he exploited that and went on to win the Olympics gold in 1968. Think about that. Often there is a tiny, seemingly irrelevant change that's taking place somewhere, but that transforms the whole ecosystem and allows you to do exactly the opposite of everybody else. And for me, that foam rubber moment was the announcement of high-resolution screens on mobile phones. For the retina display, the pixel pitch is now down to about 25 micrometers, which is half the width of a human hair. And we can use that to build new types of health diagnostic instruments right on mobile phones. And if you think about what's going on out there, a slit lamp exam to scan for your cataract, a device that really hasn't changed in a long time. Here I'm getting my retinal scan, but check out the user interface. The nurse has to show my head to align my eye with the eyepiece. And to get eyeglasses, I'm lost in a foropter. And these solutions are great in rich countries, but millions in developing countries are suffering from conditions that otherwise have simple solutions. So we have a new technology called Netra, which is a snap-on eyepiece that goes on top of a cell phone. You look through this, there'll be some patterns, use the keyboard of the cell phone to align the patterns. When they're aligned, you hit calculate, and it gives you data for prescription of your eyeglasses. Nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism, the eyepiece costs next to nothing, and the results are comparable to the highest end instruments that are out there. And as a bonus, you can also scan for your cataract, the cloudiness on your lens. What's going on here? There are two pieces to the puzzle to provide eyeglasses, but over time, the cost of dispensing glasses has come down to about $3, and even if you sell them on the street for $3, everybody in the pipeline makes money. But the cost of diagnostic, doing eye tests, even for eyeglasses, is extremely high. So if you take a high-end instrument like a wavefront sensor that's used during pre lasik surgery analysis, it shines lasers to do measurements and so on, it turns out now we can do exactly that on a mobile phone. So the Netra is the Fosbury flop equivalent. We can do the exactly opposite of what these instruments are doing. Instead of shining laser into the eye, we're using cell phones, and instead of using complex sensor, we're using the user interaction. And it's not just about blurry vision. Children don't go to school, and they cannot read well, and they remain illiterate. And grown-ups cannot do their job, and so they remain unemployed, and that leads to poverty. So it's a huge socioeconomic problem. So we have come together to solve this problem worldwide, and we have received a tremendous response, and we are working with various collaborators to take our ideas in many parts of the world. So recently, we have been funded to take glasses to the masses. And it's really an opportunity for people, whether you are in government, in social services, NGO, clinics, and technologists, to really think about mobile phones and build new technologies so entrepreneurs out there, micro-entrepreneurs out there, can do some amazing things. And when we saw this woman outside Hyderabad in India, we were impressed as to how she has invented a new business out of a weighing scale, including a beautiful entrance as a mat for her customers. And that reminds us that entrepreneurs out there can take the technology to the masses and scale it and apply it in unimaginable ways. Now, every one of us has innate abilities to invent and solve problems. And with the right mental framework, every one of us can take 
these amazing technologies and social innovation to the next level. Thank you.